So let's take a look first of all at the Masters. I'm just uh, popping up. I'm just going to pop up the uh, current odds for the Masters right now. So there you go. Those are the current odds for the Masters. We'll just run through. And obviously you can uh, follow along with us uh, over on Draft Sharks. All right. So the other thing I'm going to pop up here, though, is what you've got here as far as your stats for the Masters. Uh, so just check that out. Nine of the last 12 Masters winners checked all three of these boxes. So you can see them right there. Talk about those boxes. Yeah, and this is something we, we talked about last year, I remember, heading into the event. And there were there were four guys that – I'd have to go back and look. There were four guys that checked all the boxes. One of them was Rom, who ended up winning. Uh, I know another one was Scheffler, and there were two others. Um, so, you know, at that point, it was eight of, 8 of 11 had checked all these three. Now it's 9 of 12. So I, I'm kind of liking this um, three-pack of, of trends that I, I put together for the Masters. So, it's you know, it's obviously too early to know who's going to check the final two boxes as far as strokes gained. But, you know, basically – with the masters and there are some course fit things that I look at. I mean, you want to be you ideally want to be a long hitter at the masters because it is a long, pretty wide open golf course. But for me, the masters is always just who's played well here in the past. It's like the most predictive course history of any course they play in the PGA tour. So who's played well in the past and then who's just playing well coming in. You go, go back and look at the masters winners, at least over the last 10 years or so, very few like surprise winners of guys who weren't playing well coming in. Right. So and, and, and that's kind of what these three boxes look at. Right. You want to have someone who's finished uh, in the top 20 at Augusta before. Then you just want guys who are hitting it well. Um, tee to green coming in. So yeah, as, as we get closer, we can start looking at um, you know, how many guys check those three boxes. Yeah. My trends uh, from last year's event. I haven't updated these yet. But my trends from last year had, had the last 10 first time winners ranked inside the top 30. Yeah. So there you go. The cream definitely rising to the top. Uh, yeah. And the last 10 first-time winners made an average of 6.9 appearances. So you do yep. want to have some experience there for sure. And the last 10 winners had an average world ranking of 10.9 with two of the last three winners ranking number one. So yep. uh, it's not really oh. the golf course that you're looking for the long shots. Exactly. As I, say, I usually don't go too far down the board in masters betting um you know, hat. what's Dale Torres down to now is he 25 did I see uh let's pop it up Zelotaurus. even that's not even that's not bad 22 20, uh, to 1 now yeah yeah oh and Hideki's down to 28 <laughs> yeah right well he's already Dustin, got a green jacket so all right Dustin Johnson's not a bad look I mean he seems to be playing well and live has a good course history here yeah these two got their green jackets when nobody was watching Yep. <laughs> so yep. take that for whatever way you want to. But yeah, Zalatoris, even at 22 to 1, may not be a bad one. Justin Thomas is also 22 to 1. You know, Spieth, 18 to 1. We know he's going to contend there. So yeah, the Masters is definitely one of those deals where, unfortunately, it's not really. Look, if you're thinking of long shots, I would consider like someone like. Um, you know, some of the older guys like Louis Oosthuizen, you know, because uh, we've seen yeah. the old guy. I mean, Mickelson was runner up last year for crying out loud. Let's yeah, keep right. that in mind. How has how has Wyndham Clark done at Augusta? Because he's someone who should be good here and he's playing well. You know, he bombs it. Yeah, I don't know. He's 40 he's never to 1. Played, never played the Masters? Really? Okay. Well, his win at Wells Fargo came after. So. Almost does, almost doesn't even seem right. Uh, it's possible. Right well, if that's the case, don't bet him because, you know, we know. Yeah, he has never played the Masters. Wow. You know, Cam Young is a guy you would think would play well at the Masters. He's 35 to 1. He was in the mix, uh, was it two years ago? And he, he kind of, you know, does what Cam Young does and played it on Sunday. But yeah. He, uh, that was, it was, yeah, last year he finished seventh. And Hoygaard is 65 to 1. So there are a few, you know, few. I mean, Adam Scott is 100 to 1. So I, I, if you're looking at long shots, I'd be looking at guys like Adam Scott. I don't know if Ustazen's in here. Um, but look at guys like that. Guys that, because it happened, like I was saying before, every year you're going to get these older yeah. guys that just hang around. Justin Rose at 60 to 1, who has always had a good history at the Masters and has never won it and came close, of course, losing to Garcia in the playoff. So, yeah. 
I see. Did I see Siwoo Kim at a hundred to one? I see someone who. Um, yes, you did. One hundred and thirty yeah. to one. That ain't bad. I mean, Siwoo is someone I think that can win a major in his career. I mean, we've already seen him win the players, and he has made the cut um, six straight appearances at the Masters. Twelfth place, best finish. So he does check the top twenty box. Um, but again, the, the Masters is not a bad tournament to place futures. I think because again, you want guys that are trending coming in. So if you if you see someone over the next two, three weeks that you just think is playing well. Yeah. And you think they have a decent number at Augusta, like to you know, put, put a bet on them. Cause again, you do want guys who have played well over the first, uh, you know, three, four months of the year. Bubba is at 180 to one. You can't forget about Bubba at the masters. What's he doing on live anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those guys that you're like, okay, I guess he just took his money. All right. So <laughs> next up, let's pop up. Uh, okay. Where are we? Let's pop up the PGA Championship because these are the more difficult ones because it's a different golf course. Valhalla. Uh, so those are your winners at Valhalla. Uh, Rory back in uh, 10 years ago. Um, so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholas design. And then you've got stats on this one. T top 10 strokes gain on Nicholas courses the last two yep. years. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is worth considering, right? Because I think an architect's going to have some similarities from course to course. But, but – you know, Valhalla is obviously going to play tough. Some of these Nicholas courses are super easy. The the one that I think might have the most crossover is Memorial, which is a Nicholas design course, and it's you know tough, tight, tight fairways, long rough. So maybe as we get closer to PGA, you know, looking at just who's played well at Memorial, but you, you do see the top ten strokes gain on Nicholas courses there. Also included some other notables who you know just missed the um, top ten. Will Zalatoris in fifteenth there, and then um, the other. Notable thing, at least at this, at this, you know, this far out from the PGA, is we're going to have bent grass greens at Valhalla, which we haven't had at all yet this year. That's definitely a more of a northeast or, or east coast type of, of grass. Um, Do we know which so, event does have before PGA? Um, I mean, I like I know, I'm trying to think which um, events we'll get is the, the memorials after PGA, right? Like there honestly might not be. Okay. Any well, well, you know what? I mean, it's tough to compare, but I know Augusta is bent grass. You know, those greens are kind of their own their own animal. Um, we're, pr we're probably not going to have many, um, but again, we, you know, we do have this data from your previous seasons who who puts well best on those type of greens. Yeah, and, and a lot of the guys are not your typical top players. Right. Exactly. So there you go. Exactly. So this this might be one where you can actually yeah. do some nice futures wagering. Yep. And uh, yeah, so look, look, look at the bottom. You got Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. Uh, JT. Yeah, Sh you know, Scheffler. I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and these are those, those five guys at the bottom are guys who just generally don't putt well on any surface, but they definitely don't putt well on bank grass either. So you definitely got to factor that in. All right. Well, that's good. So I would definitely look at PGA Championship um, as a good uh, potential futures play. U.S. Open, let's pop that up. Hold on one second. There you go. So Pinehurst. this will be at Pinehurst. Yeah. Martin Keimer, my boy, uh, won when uh, – and I bet him, of course. That's why he's my boy back in 2014. And look at that. So Michael Campbell – well, Keimer had come off the players' win. So it wasn't like he was a long shot uh, mm -hmm. that year. No, wait. When was it the players' win, was it? Uh, it might have been, yeah. I think he's won, did he, uh, he won the players and the U.S. Open in the same year. Um, there's Michael Campbell. So it's a Donald Ross design. And you've got the ten, top 10 strokes gained on Ross courses the last two years. Uh, you got Bermuda Greens, top 10 strokes gained putting on Bermuda Greens the last two years. So talk about uh, talk about this uh, U.S. Open. Yeah, and what I thought was interesting about the Ross designs, I'm going to actually pull up uh, which courses that factors in, but Scotty Scheffler, 131st on Donald Ross courses. Yeah. Uh, Again, you know, these are like smaller sample size. I'm hey, not saying, you, know, you didn't win a major maybe. last year. So, yeah. So, I mean, the, the Ross courses they've played recently are East Lake and Sedgefield. So with those courses, um, and again, we're looking at like eight rounds for Scotty Scheffler, but you know, he, he actually, Scotty Scheffler has not played well at East Lake at, you know, the, for, at the tour championship where it, you know, that's a Donald Ross course. So that's something mm -hmm. to consider. Um, and yeah, these are Bermuda greens. When I think Bermuda, I immediately think of Sam Burns, who's like the best Bermuda putter. Um, so I think he's an interesting, um, you know, not, not long shot play, but he's, he's probably what, you know, 40, 50 to one. 
I don't know if you have the. Yeah, I do. Let's um, uh, take a US look. Open called up. I think you know Burns is someone who, um, you know, again, just just based on on the green type, someone who could be a decent look here. Yeah, we're at the U.S. Open, so let me pop up the U.S. Open odds. I forgot to do the PJ Championship, but you know they're all the same. Uh, odds are pretty exactly, much the same. Yeah. But uh, all right, so what are we? Who are we looking for? Uh, Sam Burns. Oh yeah, Sam Burns. She is. Where is Sam Burns? Oh man. Oh man. Sixty-five to one. That's that. See, to me, I mean, to me, that's a, that's a that's a bat. Even if these weren't for me, I know the guy doesn't have a great major record so far, but um, yeah. there you go. Give me give me Sam Burns on Bermuda Greens at sixty five to one. I'll I'll take my chances. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is that you got McNeely here, and I remember you had McNeely in the other one too, somewhere for the PGA Championship. You had him tenth, uh, top ten strokes gained putting on bedgrass. Well, he's, yeah, just, he's, just, he's a just a good putter. He's just a good putter. <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah, I mean, but he he's better on Bermuda. He's second best on Bermuda. So yeah, but. Okay, yeah. So definitely forget. So in other words, at these two events, and I'm, let me just quickly pop up the odds, even though I don't think we're going to see anything uh, crazy for a, you know as far as anything different um, at the PGA Championship either. Uh, who, who was it? The uh, uh, give me a couple Burns? players that yes, yeah, no, give me a couple players at the PGA Championship that uh, that was in what that kind of top pop? ten. Yeah. So I mean, if we if you want to look at Nicholas courses, um, Cantley, Cantley and Burns. I mean, Burns is tenth best on Nicholas courses. All right, he's sixty five to one here as well. I, mean, I, I think Burns at either of these. But he doesn't play well at majors. Is the problem? Yeah, you know? I know, but I think he I think he will. I think he will, at some point of his career. Um, I mean, for, for Val Hell, I look at Rory and Tiger winning. I think like you want to be an excellent driver and a long hitter off the tee. So I think that's definitely going to be something to look at um you know Wyndham Clark is 17th best on Nicholas courses he's also 20th best bent grass putter and I think he's someone that you know could fit that course pretty well 60 to 1 not bad Siwoo Kim Siwoo Kim was on he is yeah he's fourth best on Nicholas courses he's 100 to 1 for the PGA championship and again I would uh I'm I'm probably gonna I said this before. I already put futures money on uh, Ustazen for all the majors because he's a he's big odds, and mm-hmm. he got off to a good start overseas this year. So now he's playing at Live. So we'll see if he does uh, well there. If he does, uh, keep an eye on Ustazen in one of these majors. So okay, and um, and then finally, uh, we've got the Open Championship. So let me slide on down here. Where's the Open Championship? So this is Royal Troon, and um, you know, it's 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 much tougher to find uh, info on these courses overseas. Um, now, this is the course where you had the Hendrick Stenson Phil Mickelson duel, where you know Stenson ended up winning at minus. Oh 20. my lord! Phil was minus seventeen. Third place was minus six. That is nuts. I remember that now. Yeah, I, I remember them pulling away. I don't remember it being that big of a holy crap. So. I have, I have no clue. And we never know what to expect for winning scores at the Opens because it always depends on the wind. But Here especially, rest. I have no clue whether to expect, you know, something at, at minus 20 or something, you know, closer to minus 6. Um, I, I did find that these are bent grass greens. I have no idea how similar bent grass greens are over yeah. there to here. So I, I'm not going to factor that in too heavily. For, for the Opens, I always like just looking at guys who have played well in previous Opens because, you know, a lot of these courses are – Similar in how, how they're designed and how you, you know, it's, it's, it's different. Golf over there is different than it is here, right? It's a lot more um, creativity and stuff than, you know, here you kind of get more of the bomb and gouge type courses. Well, JT's 35 to 1. Cameron Young, we know how good he played at the Open uh, yeah. recently. Like He's that. 40 to 1. Uh, let's see. Like Any... for, a, for a top five, I don't know if I trust the guy to win, but. <laughs> Anyone else that looks good as far as the Open Championship? Uh, Sahit, Sahit, Sahit Tagala should be good at Opens. I feel like just with his short game and creativity, you know, he's kind of he's kind of like Spiethian to me. He's okay, similar player to Spieth. Hundred to one. I think Sahit's at hundred. Yep, I like that. Hoy guards at eighty. Adam Scott's at sixty-five. Rose is at sixty-five. It's surprising Rose hasn't played play, play uh, is, better uh, over there. Right is. Is Joaquin Neiman qualified for all the majors? Uh, I think he. 
because I. What do you got to be in the top fifty or some other deals? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, Joaquin Neiman is definitely somebody to keep an eye on. You're, you're right. Uh, and yeah, and he's a hundred to one. Yeah, right. But and d- definitely make check to make sure he's qualified because a lot of these books, if you place a futures bet, that's true. And the guy doesn't end up playing, you you lose that money. Whereas yeah. if you if you make the bet the week of the tournament and you know they withdraw or whatever, you at least get refunded. But you got to be careful with the futures because they'll they'll just take your money if you bet someone and he ends up not you know qualifying. Uh, let me see. What are his odds at the Masters? Where the hell is he at the Masters? I uh, see he might. I don't see him here. So I'm seeing okay. So maybe DraftKings is, is being nice to us and only listening him in. Uh, majors he's qualified for because i'm seeing he is qualified for the open but that that might be it as of now wow okay interesting which is, which is sad okay, I mean, I... all right well anyway at least it gives everybody a head start and if you have any specific questions regarding these majors uh we, that we can answer for you uh, that's what the comment section is for let us know you could also uh, log on to our discord channel more personal one-on-one even though everybody can see it, but uh, not as many people. So um, yeah, check out the Discord, comment, like, share, all of that.